Welcome to episode 294 of Grid Talk. Today we're here to preview the 2023 Canadian Grand Prix. My name is Ruby Price and joining me we have Grid Talk co-hosts Wayne Medford. Hello. And Tom Horrocks. Hello. And from Hit the Apex, Jawa Jakub. Hi everyone. Before we get into the episode, we must thank our sponsor for this episode, Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all championship finals info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and line and lines and the latest matchup reports for this year's NBA and Stanley Cup finals. Bet Online is your sports Intel headquarters this season, as we have you covered from all your insider sports wagering needs, from basketball and hockey to MLB, UFC and boxing. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favourite casino and card games available to play right from your home. Get into the action today. Head to the website or use your mobile device to join and be sure to use our promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V to receive your 50% bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. But first, if you enjoy this podcast, we'd love it if you could take five to leave us a five star rating on Spotify or a five star review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're one of the 72% of people who aren't yet subscribed to the channel, please keep helping us out with a like and a subscribe. So F1 returns to Montreal with Max Verstappen setting the field ablaze last time out in Spain, ultimately finishing nearly 25 seconds ahead of second place Lewis Hamilton. As we head to where the Brit won his first ever F1 race, the question we ask is, can Mercedes fine-tune their upgrades and take the fight to the charging Red Bull? Tom, first let's take a look at the team propping up the Constructors' Championship. Williams with a single point from Alex Albon. It hasn't really been the season they would have wanted so far, is it? No, but I do think that it's... It, it, it's so tight between that kind of fifth, sixth place all the way down to the back that there's not not a lot between them. And I I think they can take solace in the fact that they're, they're on average, they're not really the worst team on the grid. They are moving forwards. Like with regards to points, yes, they absolutely are at the moment. But had it not been for a, 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 a hot-headed moment from Logan Sargent in Australian Grand Prix, then they potentially would have had a nice haul of points already. So it's, I think it's early days. I think they are going to score more points. And it's, although this track doesn't really suit the Williams that well, what track does suit the Williams? It is a race of high attrition. So there is a chance that they, if they keep their nose clean, they can go further up there. They have won seven times here in the past, though. I do think that's a, a long way, <laughs> a long way in the past. I think 2001 was the last time they won here. Um, yeah, Bottas got a couple of podiums at the start of the Turbo Hybrid era as well. So they have had some success around here in recent times. But I, I yeah, I don't think we're going to see a Renaissance Williams performance. But I think there is certainly room for um, for optimism there. They uh, If they keep their nose clean, as I said, and they, they keep pushing forwards and try and stay out of trouble, then there's a good chance they could pick up some low end points. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually fairly confident for Williams, more than some other teams. Yeah, I think the circuit that suits Williams most, based on historical data, you'd probably have to say is Monza. Um, if a if a t- driver can just be airlifted and dropped in, and then you know get some points. But Jawad, sticking with Williams, you do have to go back to 2017 for the last time they got a point in Canada, when that was when Lance Stroll was driving for them. Uh, do you think points are on the cards, and what will Williams consider a good result this weekend? Um, like Tom said, this is very much a race of high attrition, so we can't rule out um, the fact that either Alex Albon or you know Craig Logan Sargent actually benefits from some other drivers tripping over themselves ahead of the pack. Um, I think as a bare minimum, just finishing the race and not ending up back in the garage early will be a good result for them. But if they can, you know, have a bold strategy or something like that they could end up with a point like we've seen Albon do in the past so yeah it's just about keeping their noses clean and not um uh, ending up in the wall of champions like other drivers have in the past absolutely away moving on to ninth place alpha towery they missed out on the points last time out due to a decidedly harsh penalty for yuki Tsunoda, and so far underwhelming performance from nick devries how do you see them performing this weekend uh, I'm in two minds about it, really. Um, I think I could I could definitely see them picking up points. Um, you know, the points that Sonoda has got in the past uh, have come on sort of relatively similar tracks. Um, obviously, that's sort of pre-upgrades. Um, but I think that there is quite a high likelihood. I know that they're sort of maturing, but 
I think there's a quite high, high likelihood of DeFreeze and uh, and Snowder sticking it in the wall. We've seen them do it time and uh, sort of time and time again, really. Um, and Canada's sort of a place where you uh, there's there's nowhere to hide on that sort of thing. Obviously, you know, one mistake and uh, and you're in there. But uh, I think I think there is promise. Um, you know, the the DeFreeze seems to be sorting himself out, or at least he did um, last time out. But um, <laughs> uh, sort of, yeah, seems to be sorting himself out and getting close to Sonoda, which is imp- uh, promising to see. So I think, I think there is promise, and I think they could probably steal a point or two um, in the sort of due to the attritional rena- uh, nature of the race, like Tom said. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly, an attrition um, going on. The other Alpha team are just ahead in eighth place with Guan Yu Zhou having a much stronger start to the season than his experienced teammate Valtteri Bottas. Tom, it was a strong showing from the Alphas in Canada last season. Can they replicate it this time around? And will Bottas find his form again? You're right, yes. Seventh and eighth last year was quite a, a strong performance from them and uh, and they did look fairly decent, but it was at that time of the season where the Alpha team were... They, they were still kind of riding high from from hitting the regulation set well and having quite a light car and being able to move ballast around to, to help performance. And it was kind of one iteration away from uh, from when when people started to catch up on them. So this was kind of the beginning of the end of their season, effectively. And um, so it, it, good performance last year. I don't think we're going to see the same amount of competitiveness as we saw last year. But certainly, the, the, as with Williams, the opportunity for a result is there. I'm not entirely convinced that will happen. However, you know, Joe having a much better season this year and uh, very evenly matched with Bottas certainly has had the better of Bottas in the last few races. But the pair of them tied on four points each. I wouldn't have picked that at the start of the season for the for a for them to have that few points after the start that Bottas made in Bahrain and for Joe to be that evenly matched with him. So it's it's a strong it's a strong lineup at the moment. I, I know there is some elements of uh of circumstance with Bottas's poor form as well. He's had quite a lot of floor damage in races, but but even so it's it's certainly uh, been a stronger a stronger season for Joe so far. So um yeah it, it's just going to be a case of can they push into those bottom end points and again can they keep their nose clean. It's traditionally you have four or five retirements here at this race which is which is quite a lot in recent years given the last two races I think it's the last two races we've had zero retirements. So that's uh, I, I mean I don't want to see people crashing or anything like that but uh, it would be nice to see uh, to see a little bit of attrition and get some more people into the points. So uh, uh, hopefully for for the alpha team as they inevitably sail through the years waiting to become Audi they uh, they can actually do something that's worth talking about which would be nice yeah absolutely um just ahead of alfa romeo tied on eight points jawad is Haas. they struggled with their pace in spain last time out and finished p15 and 18 can they bounce back in montreal this season yeah, you'd hope so, because in qualifying spec, Nico Hulkenberg has been amazing this season. It's last two races. He's been in Q3, but then for whatever reason in the races, they just fall away, and um, it's kept his teammate Kevin Magnussen near him in that because there has been a bit of chatter about how Hulkenberg has uh, really wiped the floor with him in qualifying and whatnot and whether Magnussen really does have it moving forwards. But, um, you know, again it's going to come down to keeping themselves out of incidents, which Haas cars are kind of prone to involving themselves in incidents in the past. And unfortunately last year we did see Mick Schumacher with a um, engine failure. So that put him out of the race and Magnussen well outside the point. So it's a tough one to say they look to have a, you know, quick car on paper it works well in qualifying just in the race they seem to fall away a problem that they had you know even at the end of the last set of regulations so you know if we do have an attritional race and we see cars falling over each other then for sure Haas if they keep their noses clean will be someone to benefit definitely and sticking with Haas away they've only finished in the points once in Canada in their six appearances here and that was Roman Grosjean in 2017 is this just one of their bogey tracks or does that speak to how much the American outfit have struggled to be competitive over the years? I mean, I think they struggled to be competitive um, as a nature of the way their model worked. Um, you know, obviously there was a, at the time that they sort of bought into F1, they, you know, had the Ferrari and buying in those components um, for 2017 clearly helped. But um, obviously I think we, we see it more and more. They start the season well, 
time and time again and then they sort of fall backwards um you know it, it it's kind of i don't know i i, I don't think I, I think the model worked clearly for a while but um clearly it's only it's sort of sort of i think the, the it's been disappointing for 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 a few years now uh and we see the sort of pattern time and time again where like i say they start the season well and then they drop backwards and i don't think they've got the development ability to keep up um i think it says also a lot that you know nico holkenberg's only points come from a quite a quite you know an astoundingly crazy australian grand prix um and kevin magnuson has only sn uh, snuck a few points um you know well two uh with two tenth place finishes so i, don't, I think it's sort of uh it would be unfair to say that Magnussen is um, woefully underperforming. I think it's just a bit of luck of the draw uh, where they've ended up. So yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be a hard season for, basically on out from here because um, this is kind of the downturn point of the season, really. Yeah, definitely. Tom uh, McLaren looked on for a solid haul of points before Turn One in Spain last time, uh, returning to their standard livery in Canada, where they also finished with both cars outside the points in 2022. What will Zach Brown, Lando Norris, and Oscar Piastri expecting going into this weekend? Um, hoping and praying. I think it's uh, it's not been it's not great. Uh, I mean, I don't. I think McLaren probably would have, or Lon Norris certainly would have, kind of just gradually move down the order anyway but uh, i certainly think there was a couple of points on offer but yeah it's they're, they're clearly the sixth best team at the moment uh they, they seem to be ahead of you know your hat out for a mayo alpha tory they, they seem to be a step ahead of them but um not really competing with alpine at the moment the only thing that's keeping them in that fight with alpine is alpine's failure to deliver on a race weekend however mclaren have been guilty of that as well on occasion so i'm not saying for one moment that mclaren have optimized every weekend like um some teams further up the grid have done but they they have got the the, the the second highest win record here, I think, but they've not won here over 10 years. So we're not going to have a win anytime soon for McLaren at all, let alone at this track. Uh, not looking much better than last year, to be honest. Um, it's... It's difficult. It, again, it's it's it, you you sit and you hope and and you pray and and whatever you want to do to to try and get your team up there. But I, I don't think they're they're gonna. I don't think this is gonna suit them. I've just got this this feeling it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough race. Uh, Piastri's not got a lot of experience at this track, um, and uh, it, it's I, I think it's it's gonna be tough for them. I, I I hope they can they can certainly push into the points and take that fight to Alpine to give us something to to cheer about for that coveted fifth place in the championship. But uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a difficult one for them, I think, and I fear. Yeah, thirteen wins to Ferrari's fourteen here. McLaren's last win here being Lewis Hamilton in twenty twelve. Jared, thanks for the stat. Um, are uh, uh, McLaren are in a bit of a no man's land at the minute with seventeen points, and as Tom mentioned, they are you know ahead of um, the bottom three, but not quite just able to capitalize on the race weekends. This is a team that we've recently become accustomed to fighting, you know, to be around the top three to five places. At this point in the season, do you think that's going to be possible? What do they need to do to achieve that? It's really difficult to say because they brought this massive upgrade that was much anticipated in Baku. And even though we haven't had, you know, uh, We've had very, uh, you know, mixed amount, different uh, mixed circuit types. You know, we've had street courses. We've had one traditional track being Barcelona, where they their upgrades did translate to good qualifying pace, but their race pace was pretty shocking. So, it's it's really difficult, and you know, not saying you know, perhaps in some corners the knives are out a little bit um, on McLaren management with what they're doing. Of course, they. Uh, decided to sack James Key earlier on in the year after their poor start to the 2022 regs. Um, they've made waves for, <clears throat> yeah, that's a good point too. Um, they've made waves with signing Rob Marshall over from Red Bull to head up their new um, engineering department, technical director in that role. So, you know, they're making a lot of noise, but it doesn't seem to be translating to results at the moment. And that's the thing which is really frustrating as a fan. I know a lot of us on this show are McLaren fans. And yeah, you know, to have had those lofty heights, you know, a couple of years ago where they were third in the Constructors' Championship. Yes, you know, perhaps not representative that they won a race, 
but you know it gave everyone optimism that you know perhaps the path back to the front of the grid was sooner than it was and you know they've now regressed to being at the bottom of the midfield and yes you know they're comfortably or not quite comfortably I'd say head of Haas right now but it would be embarrassing if they fell back into seventh or eighth in the constructors championship and that's when I think comfortably you could get those knives out and start poking Zach Brown and his colleagues there. Yeah, definitely. McLaren's one and only race win between 2012 and um, now being Daniel Ricciardo and everyone considering Daniel Ricciardo to have completely underperformed, you know, since he left Red Bull. But Owain Alpine's Esteban Ocon has been going rather well lately with a podium in Monaco and a relatively strong showing in Spain, even if it was a bit aggressive at times. Uh, Gasly's often been in recovery mode after a less impressive qualifying. Uh, the Alpine has shown a good top speed, which will come in handy on the back straight. But where do you really see the French uh, outfit performing in the streets of Montreal? I mean, they're relatively average, aren't they? So they kind of just, <laughs> you know, they, if you look at what their position in the uh, in the standings, both drivers and constructors, they are right slap bang in the middle, um, which I thought was funny. Um, I think the, obviously the, the part of that is just due to the fact that obviously they've uh, they've managed to get that third place, which um, when they're not taking each other out or uh, having te- you know terrible races, um, kind of I don't know, they seem to be relatively strong and and just picking up the. Uh, two or three points at a time. Um, so, I, you know, I think, as you say, it's the, the straight line speed is probably going to be their biggest um, weapon here, um, at least to just sort of stop them going backwards. Um, as long as they don't run into each other or blow up, um, I think they, they can get a fairly strong result out of it, um, but I wouldn't imagine it's going to go um, as high as third anymore. Uh, I think that's that's the peak of their season. Yeah, definitely. And considering that the peak of their season potentially being Monaco, that's a place to that's a place to have a peak, you'd say. Uh Ferrari were well and truly beaten last time out in Spain though, Tom, with signs coming home in P five, Leclerc not even managing the top ten. We saw a good fight between Carlos and Max here last season. Do you think we could see that again? Or is the pace of Ferrari just not enough to even think about that challenge? I don't think we'll be thinking about that challenge. Unfortunately, it's uh, you say that was that was a that was a good race last year with science. You know, everyone willing science to take the fight to Verstappen in that final stint, but just wasn't to be. It's just they're just a bit of a Frankenstein team at the moment. I do think they genuinely have the pace to to uh, push up and fight with Aston Martin for that third place and and Mercedes as well, depending on how they how they uh, how those upgrades continue to develop. But they they need to maximise their race weekends, and they're just not doing that. Once again, it's the same old problem with Ferrari. The same. It's not been as calamitous as last year because they're not fighting for race wins. But it's the same problems are still there. They're still arguing about what tyres are to be put on when, what happens in what pit stops, starting the race on the wrong tyres. You know, doing going out and qualifying at the wrong times, and you know, que- queuing up into pit lane on dries when it's looking like it's starting to rain. It's it's the same things. It's just not happening for race wins. So they're getting a bit of a pass on it and and you know we said last year that uh after last year often but but also got sat that we thought maybe that was a little bit harsh and that if ferrari come to be successful this year that's all down to bonotto i think we still have to say now that potentially that was the right decision to remove bonotto because this is still bonotto's team we can't judge for sure on what's happened so far and he's got to take a year just to just to figure out what's going wrong at ferrari and it turns out quite a lot so i i can't see if they're going to get a win, it's going to be down to there being a really straightforward race where there are no decisions to be made whatsoever, apart from the blinding obvious ones and everyone ahead of them makes a mistake. So I'm not saying they won't win a race this year, but I, I, I see, I think they are the fourth most likely team to win a race this year, put it that way. So uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing a fight for the win. They may well luck into something where, you know, with a safety car or a red flag or something, but because they do have a pacey car and a strong car, but I, I can't see them fighting for any any race win or anything like that, no. Yeah, and Jawad, I mentioned Leclerc not managing to make it back into the top 10 in Spain after starting towards the back. This is something we've seen a lot from Charles. Uh, We know he is a great driver and we've seen him make overly ambitious moves in the past, so it's not exactly a lack of overtaking opportunities. But if he has a poor qualifying again in Canada this weekend, would you be expecting him to make it up for the race? I mean, you would certainly hope so, and... 
Canada is one of those tracks where, you know, lack of overtaking isn't an excuse because of the long straights and multiple DRS zones where overtaking opportunities are plenty. But yeah, in I'll happily say that Barcelona or the Spanish Grand Prix was, you know, Leclerc's one of his worst weekends in a Ferrari. And the fact that, you know, even after taking the car out of Park Ferme, after qualifying and doing the setup change and changing the rear end of the car, that they couldn't diagnose if there was a problem that Leclerc had reported just speaks volumes I think it's you know whether Leclerc is mentally at his wits end as well with the team given how much has been going on and uh, talks about you know repeated questions that you know are you going to stay loyal to Ferrari and he's basically like yeah you know I dream nothing more than winning a championship with Ferrari but the fact that you know the team you know the management you look at the higher ups I think you know a lot of their problems go right to the top to John Elkin the chairman don't like the guy don't like how he runs it you know he's not a racing personality whatsoever and he keeps interfering with the team but anyway with Leclerc um yeah, it would be a serious problem if he can't make it into the points if he has a poor qualifying this weekend because, again, one of those drivers who has so much talent when it comes to one-lap speed, he's been, you know, the benchmark qualifier. You could say um, one of the benchmark qualifiers over the last couple of years, but then in terms of racing, yeah, he's just not got that, you know, grit to even make it into the top 10 when he needs to. Yeah, definitely. Away in Aston Martin really seemed to struggle in Spain with Fernando Alonso coming home behind his teammate Stroll in P6 and 7. Uh, it's the team owner's home race and obviously Stroll's as well. Um, they'll be looking to bounce back if they can, but with a resurgent Mercedes, will that be something they can actually achieve? Um, I don't think so. I think it's one of those things where they should have made hay where the sun sh- while the sun shined. Sean? Sean? There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think with with we're seeing now obviously um i think the sort of the difference between the good and the great teams uh even obviously as, as the results like at the start of the season didn't necessarily favor mercedes um you know aston martin had a couple of issues um and they've they have dropped some points um and they don't have this uh, as strong a lineup across the two cars obviously um as uh as the mercedes so it's 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 one of those things where you know once you have uh, a team like Mercedes getting into gear and uh, and uh, Aston Martin not being able to sort of... I don't think there's another gear there to select for them. I don't think they can step it up um, across the sort of second two-thirds of the season, I would say. Um, I think was, this is starting to now be the issue where, uh, you know, it, it, they're kind of... Their, their strengths weren't... Well, I'll put it this way. They were targeting um, Monaco as a place that they could get race wins. So they were clearly looking for uh, lap time speed um, just uh, across the street circuit and then to hold position, um, which I think says a lot about their sort of pro- prospects. Um, you know, even with sort of upgrades and things like that, um, that they are bringing to Canada. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a, I think, I think there's, there's steps forward to be made and they've clearly got, they've got, you know, a competent driver in Stroll and obviously a great driver in Fernando Alonso. So I wouldn't count anything out, but um, it, I think it's going to be, it's only going to get harder from here. And I, d- I don't see it, you know, being, uh, I don't see them being sort of locked out of the podium, but I think it's it's a, it's going to take a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Tom, it was a much better showing from Mercedes in Spain with Hamilton and Russell bringing it home for the first double podium for the team since Brazil last season. Uh, Given Hamilton's previous performances around this circuit, do you think it's possible for a repeat this weekend? Pretty good round here, isn't he? He's uh, he's won a couple of times. No, he's... uh, It's... I think outright pace, you're still going to have Red Bull there. Absolutely. I don't think there's any scenario, pretty much any circuit this year where Red Bull are not going to be the favorites. Uh, but when it comes to drivability and, and, and this circuit, Lewis does seem to have something else. Yeah. He's won um, seven times here, which is a joint record with Michael Schumacher. Um, and he won four of those with Mercedes, but the other three were with McLaren, which were not a championship team at the time i mean obviously his first ever win it was uh it was a uh, championship winning car but he's he's won races around here that 
he probably shouldn't have won. And at times as well, when Ferrari were in their pomp in sort of 17, 18, 19, he's won races in, in that period as well. Won with a fully justified five second penalty, which I will still argue about now. But uh, it's, I, I think, you know, George goes well here as well. He got a fourth place just behind Lewis last year. I think it's, it's going to be, again, it's going to be very, very tough to beat the Red Bulls, but uh, circum- sorry, it's going to be very difficult to beat one of the Red Bulls. Um, so circumstances prevailing, it may well be that, that they can they can get another double podium. They're going to need to fight off those Aston Martins because they were flattered a little bit by Ferrari and Aston being just so bad in Spain. I don't think they're genuinely the second best team right now, but they are in that ballpark. So it's all about recovering and trying trying to push forward ahead of those and close that gap to Red Bull, but uh, but yeah, it's they're, they're definitely in with a shout of getting a decent points all this weekend as well. I'm quite positive about their chances. Yeah, absolutely. And following on from those comments as well, Jared, um, the upgrades do appear to be working on the Mercedes with the dr- drivers reporting a much more stable car and crucially a faster car as well. Um, with some refinement, a bit more experience running it on track. Do you think they can muscle their way back to the front of the season or is it just damage limitation mode trying to cure P2 in the constructors? Um, I did have a theory uh earlier on in the season and i mentioned it again on my own show this week that if the atr penalty for red bull does actually hurt them properly what if we have a 2009 style finish to the season where you know braun gp they came out hot at the start of the year and they had you know all the wins and everything and basically red bull outdeveloped them to be the quicker team at the moment uh, by the end of the season it didn't stop Braun from winning the championship, but it meant that going into the following season that um, Red Bull were the quicker team. So I had this theory, and you know, Mercedes being the former Braun GP team, that what if um, they find themselves in that position towards the end of the year? And yes, while the upgrades have worked for them um, and they finally got to put them through their paces in Spain, it is sort of the start or chapter one of a long road to recovery, I think, after going down this wrong development path with the no side pod. So the fact that, you know, they seem as positive as they have been about it, both drivers too, and, you know, in particular Hamilton as well with his future um, still yet to be put, you know, signed away um, with the team. Um, yeah, it's, it's very encouraging. And, you know, whilst people might, moan about Mercedes domination in the past you know it'd be nice just to see another team being able to go toe-to-toe with Red Bull and you know a prospect of another Hamilton versus Verstappen uh, fight at the front would be quite nice because yeah one person just walking away with it just isn't that exciting to be honest. Yeah and the thing that a lot of people do tend to miss uh, when they're complaining about you know the comparison of the Red Bull versus Mercedes domination is at least during the Mercedes domination there was either an inter-team battle for 90% of it or they were fighting a team that you know were able to at least win on occasion that's not really something that's been happening as much um, so far but we are only you know one and um, a third of the way through this current set of regulations um, in terms of seasons but yeah, it'd be nice to see some uh, fight, fights for the win on the track at the very least. But looking at Red Bull then, Owain, um, a lot of speculation about Max going to Ferrari. Uh, silly season starting early, or do you think he would want to go to the struggling former champions and attempt a Schumacher-esque return to glory for the prancing horse? Is that even a question? <laughs> There's no way. No way in hell. <laughs> you know, it's, to, to expand on it, why why would he do it i mean like you you, you it, would, it would you know what it would be an inspired lewis hamilton to mercedes-esque move but red bull are the team to beat and that doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon you know they're so far ahead i i i can't i can't fathom a, a world where that happens unless you know ferrari decide to give him a ludicrous contract yeah absolutely um Tom, Christian Horner said that Perez now has nothing to lose, but thinking about it critically, did he ever really have anything to win with how Max Verstappen centred that Milton Keynes-based team is? Well, he's got a seat to lose, hasn't he? It's uh, it's not really... Uh... <laughs> 
it's not really he's got nothing to lose at all um he but yeah you're right he never really had anything to win anyway just to touch back on the, on the whole max verstappen ferrari thing if, if you if you permit me i can see a scenario where max verstappen goes to ferrari and that's when christian horner Adrian Newey and whoever the second driver at Red Bull means that the top three earners in the team means they can't afford to keep Max Verstappen because let's be honest, it's only the top three earners that that are exempt from the budget cap. So I can see a scenario where they can no longer afford Max Verstappen due to budgetary reasons. Then they might just go and break the cost cap again anyway. So anyway, but moving back to Perez then, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a street track, isn't it? So you might have a chance. Oh, wait, no, hang on. Let's look back at his previous history of uh, of uh, Canadian Grand Prix. He's beaten his teammate once in the Canadian Grand Prix, and those teammates include Nika Hulkenberg, Esteban Ocon, and Lance Stroll. He beat Esteban Ocon once in a race where Ocon was begging to be let past him because he could have a fight with Ricardo, and Perez refused, and as a result, they ended up losing out to Vettel. So he's got... No, it's, even though it's a street track, he's not the street circuit master at all. This, there's absolutely no chance that Perez does anything in this race whatsoever. I've already been very vocal about my uh, my my hope my hope of him doing anything in the championship and the likelihood of him ever winning another Formula One race. So we won't touch back on that one again because I know that uh, I'm uh, yes I'm probably not going to be uh, very popular with a certain uh, nationality if I keep going on like this. But uh, yeah, I, I don't see any scenario where where Perez is going to be a match for Checo in this uh, match for Checo, a match for Verstappen in this race, and it's more just going to be a case of fighting with the Mercedes, the Astons and the Ferraris and trying to uh, trying to get some decent points on the board there. Uh, come to me for my predictions and you'll see what I think about that. Yeah, and Jared, the question then really is, is this Max's race to lose? Yes, basically, yeah. Um, the, you know, he's probably, I don't know what the bookies are saying, but probably the shortest price ever to for a Grand Prix win. You know, it's it, it's inevitable. That's the one adjective I can use going into every race. Unless, you know, there's a cruel twist of fate or, you know, something happens with a car. You know, maybe, you know, what happened to Mercedes in 2014 with their cars overheating and whatnot um, costs him on this occasion. And we will see, you know, someone break through for a win. I don't know, but yeah, you know, the way he's driving at the moment, the the rich vein of form he's in, it's an un you know beatable combination. So we do have to sort of sit back and take our hats off, you know, credits where credit's due, but at the same time, as we said earlier, it would be nice to um see it mixed up a little bit. Definitely. So we've had a look at the teams and, you know, their prospective fortunes in Canada. Now it's time to lock in some predictions. So I'll start off with Owain. Um, What's your prediction for the podium this weekend? Um, I mean, it's just going to be Max Verstappen <laughs> on P1. Um, I was thinking about what I was thinking about the uh, when Joe had said about the bookies and I was like, you know, to be honest, Max Verstappen could start P19 and he'd still get even odds on it. Um, and then, I don't know. Let's be honest, it's probably it's, prob- it's probably going to be the Mercedes in, in some form. So I'm going to go with Russell for P2 and then Alonso, because he's always on the podium. <laughs> Alonso for P3. So Verstappen, Russell, Alonso from Wayne. Tom, your podium, please. Uh, I, I, no, uh, no surprises with Max Verstappen in first place. I think uh, it'll be a different Mercedes in Lewis Hamilton coming home in second place. And uh, in, in a brave fight back from out of the points into the points, it's going to be Charles Leclerc taking that podium position because we know that he's a great racer and he can do that really. So I'm going with, uh, with Verstappen, uh, Hamilton, Leclerc. Verstappen, Hamilton, Leclerc. Jared, is it Verstappen on top for you as well? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, unless you want to put Adrian Newey uh, for a change. You know, <laughs> he should stand on the top step one every now and again. But yeah, Verstappen on top. I'll put Lewis Hamilton in second and Fernando Alonso third. Yeah. And then uh, looking at a bit more bold uh, predictions, Owain, um, what's your bold prediction for this weekend? I'm going to go with both Alpha Tauri's to get in the points. Now, that would be bold considering the Wall of Champions and Nick DeVries' track record with Walls and Sonoda's track record with exiting the pits here. Tom, your ball prediction. (laughs) Sergio Perez to not be in the points. 
Sergio Perez to not be in the points. Wow. Yeah, at that point, you've got to start thinking, is there going to be an inter-team switch or something along those lines? I don't, I don't think that will happen. But yeah, I just don't think he'll be in the points. Still, he'll, He's got nothing to lose except his front wing. Absolutely. Jawad, your bold prediction, please. Uh, contrary to what I said about my top three, I'm going to say Lance Stroll will be on the podium for his home race. That way, no one can accuse me of Stroll bashing anymore. <laughs> I mean, your bold prediction is allowed to supersede the actual prediction. If Lance Stroll gets a podium this weekend, that would be pretty impressive. But um, you never know. It's Formula One. Um, and at this point now, it's always a good opportunity to provide our um, the people who join me with a bit of uh, opportunity for some self-promo. So... Tom, let's start with you. You are, of course, a Grid Talk co-host, but also from the Monkey Seat podcast. Take it away. Yeah, we're uh, just two two lads having having a laugh about Formula One, and then like this week, uh, editing the podcast and forgetting to upload it for three days. So uh, <laughs> sorry about that one, everyone. It arrived in your inbox on Friday, I think, as opposed to <laughs> like Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the kind of vibe that we're at. We're uh, we're a low key, um, very unprofessional podcast, unlike this one where we just have a bit of a laugh and chat and have wrong opinions about everything. So if you want to check us out, then please feel free. We'd love to hear from you. Monkey Seat Podcast uh, on all the socials at Monkey Seat Pod. Absolutely. Jared, uh hit the apex. Take it away. Yeah, so just a podcast I do by myself talking about F1 and the V8 Supercars Championship here in Australia. I also live blog all the F1 races for a website called The Raw here, and I've written a couple of pieces for F1 Chronicle as well. And there's a Twitter account at Hit the Apex Media, which you can follow also. Absolutely. Go and check it out. And Owain, also Grid Talk co-host. Is it just the back catalogue or is there anywhere else? Yeah, if you want to hear my dulcet tones, go and find me in the back catalogue. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And if you want to hear anything else from me, you can find me on the socials at Rubes, R-U-U-B-E-Z, sticker 001 on the end if it's Instagram. Um, but on that note, Grid Talk is available on YouTube where most episodes are recorded live, as well as Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal and Pocket Casts. Just search Formula on Grid Talk for our huge back catalogue of shows with previews and reactions to qualifying and the race results. Please consider supporting the channel on Patreon so we can get mics, lights and better recording equipment. And also make sure you subscribe so the first to know when each new weekly episode is released. We'll be back next week with plenty more F1 content. Thank you very much for listening to the Grid Talk podcast presented by Bet Online, and goodbye.